Hello and welcome to the Launch Energy Motor Park at St. David's for the conclusion of the TM Master Cup Series' European Tour, the Round of Wales, the only visit to the United Kingdom this year. Unlike most traditional UK tracks, this is one of the few that was not based around an old RAF base. After a couple of incidents in 2017, of course, in 2018 the, uh, the chicane that used to be in Turn 1 was removed, and that's now a fast right-hand corner leading into probably the best passing zone, Turn 2. Another good passing zone presents itself in turns 5 and 6, however the racing line tends to narrow up exiting turn 6. Also in turns 8 and 9 we've seen some passing there in the past along with turns 11 and 12. A couple of awkward corners there to end the lap. We saw a lot of incidents there last year. Now let's meet the starting grid. On the pole for the second race in a row is rookie points leader Saul Fischel. On the outside of the front row is Ingrid Hadeland, the first of the Lynx cars, sponsoring a special livery this week. Cameron Taylor and Scott Stoidler in row number two. Row number three are the Richter boys, Arto Kakinen and Marco Castaneda in car number nine. Row four, Joe Olenek and David Gregorian, and the other two hot as Walter cars. Liv Eklund in row five in the second of the Lynx Mermaids cars and Chris Davenport on her outside. Kirk Pliskin and Carter Fitzgerald in row six. Good efforts there. Fitzgerald showing strong here this week. Tom Moore in car number four and Adrian Devereaux who has run extremely well here in the past. Greg Woodard and Morgan Lafay in her home race in row number eight. On row nine, Daniel Lechleiter, very controversial qualifying effort, and we'll show that later, and Zelda Ashby in car number 55. Row 10, Luciano Savarol and Vincenzo Focciasato, the Italian in with a promoter's option. Gaspar D'Souza in row 11, along with another promoter's option, Englishman Darren Cardell. Ryan Matthews and Yevgeny Kuznetsov, winner, last race out in row number 12. Row 13, Ian Cooper, they're having a good week so far, along with Alessandro Rossini. Craig Yancer, great effort there in qualifying with Brandon LaRoe. Tony Durbin in the fastest independence trophy car, Josh Marshall in row 15. Good effort there from the Australian. Going back to row 16, Scott Bates and Connor Friel in car 68. Row 17, two more independents that really need to get a good result here. Fernando Costa and Catherine Williams, Truman Ellison and Packer Carroll once again in the old tour livery in car number 71. In row 19, we have Lucas Grabert in car 34. That was supposed to be a blue car for this week. However, after a fire in practice, the car was repainted and rewrapped. It'll be a white car today. And then in row 20, Trek Tauger in car 741, and Ike Durbin in a special MT sports livery. Row 21, Timothy Ruiz and Richard Scott. Chuck Johnson and Zach Webster in row 22, and Irishman Garretton at the back of the grid. Aaron Van Bommel crashed in practice. They did not have a backup car, and the Dutchman was withdrawn in car 66. He ran fourth in the TM Europe race earlier today. Now, we're going to look at Daniel Lechleiter's qualifying lap here that was so controversial. The pit commitment line is right where that yellow light is. Now, Lechleiter looks like he's taking the pit entry. No, he does not, it looks like. Lechleiter and his team noticed that the pit commitment line is not at the start of that, wa of that wall where the, the light is mounted on. It's at the light itself. And that was uh, posted on a bulletin that went out to every team Saturday. But apparently, the 10 team appeared to be the only ones to read that detail. That lap was protested by a good chunk of the grid. However, it, that time was reviewed, that lap was reviewed, and Lechleiter was able to keep his position, much to the chagrin of most others, because that car qualified pretty well. And we'll see what he's able to do here today in car number 10. He starts back in 17th. Regardless of the legality of Lechleiter's actions, it's not the craziest story we've seen this weekend. We have to rewind back a couple of days first. On Tuesday, Connor Friel was announced as being the driver of car number 68 for the foreseeable future. Uh, no reason was given until Saturday morning. The former driver of this car was subpoenaed by a court in the United States about his involvement in a child pornography ring. Team Timothy fired him immediately and then asked Adrian Devereaux about who to name as a replacement driver. Devereaux recommended Connor Friel, who has made a couple starts in the TM Light Series this year. The journeyman out of Texas has been running on and off in the TM Master Cup Series since he made his debut in 2014. Some of you might be thinking, wait a minute, the same Connor Friel that Devereaux lobbied to have suspended from the Master Cup Series in 2014? Yes, the same one. After last season, it looked like we'd never see Friel in a Master Cup car again. But in a strange twist of fate, the man who lobbied to have Friel's Master Cup career ended before it started has now successfully gotten him a ride again. His expectations might be rather modest today, but we'll see what Friel can do today. He starts deep in the field. There's the grid. Fischl in the blue car, Hadland in the white mermaid's car. Waiting for the lights to send this 45 car grid away. And here we go. Fischl, good jump off the line. Hadland, great start for the uh, car number 19. Stoidler, also a good launch off the line. 
A little slow for Castaneda and David Krikorian. Adrian Devereaux making some headway in the back. Hadland clears Fischl in the first corner. She must be taking some lessons from drag racers because what a start for Hadland. The uh, Norwegian all, already pulling away. Fischl in second. Taylor slots into third. Scott Soidler trying to fight his way into fourth. But here comes Arto Kakinen. And uh, Stoidler trying to uh, gonna slide back. Castaneda in. Castaneda big slide after contact. Some more in the back. Here is Fochistado in the uh, the only FM in the field. The Millennium Autosport car contact with the Suzu who forces his way through. Uh, Fochistado of course qualified for the Cariola Grand Prix. Uh, this team very active in Europe. Um, of course qualified for Cariola was running decently well in it before mechanical problems sidelined him. As now he falls into the clutches of Matthews and Cardell. Uh, in the Ferdinand car, here's Cameron Taylor now trying to get his way up into second. Taylor has not yet won a race, which seems like a little bit of a surprise, but uh, he has been a contender in most of the races this year. Uh, so we'll see what the Ohioan is able to do as he gets around his teammate Fischl for second. Fischl doesn't put up much of a fight there. Kekkonen has secured fourth, Stoidler fifth, on Marco Castaneda back in sixth. Here is uh, Hadland now. The, now we're going to talk a little bit about mermaids here. What is that? Mermaids is actually a uh, United Kingdom based charity for transgender and gender non-conforming youths. Uh, this is a very important deal for the uh, for uh, this team to put this together. They will be running a similar livery for the Trevor Project in the United States later on in the year, I do understand. But especially with uh, a lot of recent events here in the UK, it's a really good uh, showing of support here for Lynx to be bringing this livery out. And uh, it's on both cars, cars 19 and 11. But uh, they're not identical. You can, uh, they, it's kind of easy to identify them because uh, Eklund's car is a uh, larger stripe down the side as Tony Durbin goes around after contact with Connor Friel. That hole was never going to be open by the time Durbin got to the corner. That was Friel's corner and Durbin just ran into the side of him. Perfect example of play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Uh, Adrian Devereaux back here in the 74 car has dominated this uh, here before in the in uh, when he was back at Hot as Walter Racing, the home team, you might say. But um, now that he's at the Michelin Suns, Devereaux, would, uh, I'm not going to say it doesn't. He doesn't quite look like he has in the past because he did come from further back in the field to win here in 2016. So, uh, but he is definitely. You cannot count out Adrian Devereaux here at this track, even when, even with the layout changes, he has always still been excellent here. Uh, we'll have to see what he's able to do today, but he's holding off Greg Woodard, who has also gone very well here in the past. Um, here is Fuchisato again in the 175 car. I think we're looking for something. Oh, into Kuznetsov, and Kuznetsov hangs on to it. Now, we thought there was, we got reports that there was something dropping from this car, but I'm uh, not sure what it was. Uh, maybe a bit too much adrenaline, perhaps, uh, but... Um, uh, Fochisato gets himself under control and back underway. The Italian having a good showing today. Here is, here is Eklund in the car number 11. Uh, usually been very quiet so far, but this, uh, but she's been doing a lot of promotional work um, throughout the week, and it's really, it's really good to see. Eklund has been notorious for being the most difficult person to get hold of for an interview. Uh, um, I'm going to be honest, it's easier to interview Kirk Pliskin than it is to get a hold of Liv Eklund as far as interviewing is concerned, and I did not think that was ever going to happen. Uh, but um, anyways, it's really good to see that Eklund is taking this, uh, taking, um, taking it very seriously this week as far as uh, with some of the work that they've been, that Lynx Racing has been doing to help out here. As she's uh, holding off two of the hottest Walter cars. Now here is the uh, temporary livery on the 34 with the new Aqualtum sponsorship. Not the prettiest thing in the world. The numbers on the that car were, were originally black. They pulled out the old decals on there, and it just doesn't work. Thankfully, that's a one. That's only for this race, and it's only because of um, extenuating circumstances. It's Adrian Devereaux trying to fight a past Tom Moore, giving him a good fight there. Didn't think Tom Moore was going to be the best uh, road racer, uh, to be honest. But uh, but even still, he is giving a, a three-time former champion. A real workout, a real run for his money early on. And here's Carter Fitzgerald in the 60 car. The Matthews Motorsports cars have actually been able to test here, which is more uh, because more than anyone else can say, because the Aspira was inexplicably a very popular club car in the UK when it was first launched. Uh, it took the firm and the uh, by surprise as well. But the Matthews Aspira are very popular here in the UK. Uh, there's it's run at several different levels and. Uh, 
uh, even as like some very high levels of touring car racing as well, there is a special model for that. Uh, but uh, Carter Fitzgerald running very well in, uh, so far. Uh, now here is uh, here is the car number 10, Daniel Lechleiter. Uh, aside from qualifying shenanigans, that he does look like he actually has some pace because uh, he's only dropped two spots, which is reasonable uh, for the start. Didn't lose too many. Uh, and his uh, long run pace in practice looked looked encouraging to say the least. Um, now it, this is now granted this is a Tenere. Not much has been expected of him at all this year, but uh, this half of the Tenere garage at least looks a lot more stable than the other half. And they will actually be mer merging those two teams into one shop uh, later on in the year. So we'll see what's uh, we'll to see what's in store today. Now here is. Ike Durbin in the MT Sports livery. Now he was not well received because of the sponsorship I'd like to point out. Um, it's a little suspect to run that here for that sponsorship because uh, there's a lot of proposals in the government to regulate loot boxes gambling. That's because they are. Let's be real here. And um, it seems like that the company is just throwing that sponsorship on this car in a bit of a uh, uh, cynical bit of goodwill. But even still that car is running pretty well. and. Um, uh, we believe we'll see this livery again, and every time Mike Durbin is a different primary sponsor, we can expect it to be car 69. Here is Morgan Le Fay in running it here in her home race. She's from right on the border of England and Wales, which is why she flies the, uh, she runs under the English flag by a technicality. Um, but she's having a good, a good run so far, running in 17th. She's been on the pole in this series before and has finished on the podium. Yeah, yet to score her first win, but she hasn't run full time ever. Now here is a good little battle here between the uh, Richter teammates. That is Kekkonen and Castaneda. Uh, Marco Diaz Castaneda, who we're focused on right now. Some good news out of his camp. Uh, he is set to be married uh, later on in the year to his uh, partner of about a year and a half, uh, Alejandro Avila. So um, good to see Castaneda. Uh, proud to announce that um, in, uh, in practice. And he's been just uh, full of energy so far this week, and it's been great to see. Uh, Kurt Pliskin in car 16, new sponsor again, as uh, seems to be the case quite often, but the uh, he's having a pretty solid run here, running in 10th. He's also had some good results lately here. Here are the Hodges Walter cars. They're regular cars, Krikorian and Olenek, and right right ahead of them is Stoidler. Um, now, uh, there's there's been some discussions, actually, about, the, uh, about a lot of those stickers in front of the car numbers. You see those? Uh, those little decals there are usually reserved for vent are for parts vendors and the like uh, that some of the teams use. There's been talk of removing those, but not too many teams are in favor of that. Now here is Ike Durbin again in car 69. Now he has just had a little bit of contact, I think, with Ruiz, but um, uh, Ruiz trying to get his way by. Oh, Ike Durbin is wide into the tire wall, and oh, Tony Durbin, go oh, good evasive maneuver there, and Ike Durbin sends himself into as much trouble as his sponsor's been in uh, the UK courts. So, um, don't, I think that might be, uh, uh, well, sort of karma anyways. Now here is Scott Stoidler in the uh, 26 car leading his uh, teammates here. You may notice that on some of those, I'm going back to those little stickers in front of the, num the, uh, the numbers, the contingency stickers. Um, uh, those have been in recent years. We've seen those in monochrome. Notice that the hottest Walter cars don't do that. Uh, Adrian Devereaux, however, and Chris Davenport do have them in mono in like a monochrome style, which so that they blend in with the rest of the livery. See there, uh, they're white on the 17, and they uh, kind of they're in a negative color on the 74, meaning the same yellow, so that they don't look too obtrusive. Um, as as uh, we saw Devereaux go by here, running order here on the left. As you see, some good starts there by uh, by a couple people. Kuznetsov up to 20th. Here is Greg Woodard running in 15th. Of course, his first win came here. He's been in the top five three of the last four years, and the only time he hasn't, uh, he was sixth. So Woodard, uh, this is a track Woodard has gone pretty well at in the past. So uh, car 41 uh, representing very strongly as he moves up to 14th across the line. Uh, that's Savarol in the Atlantis five car behind him with uh, some interesting things to say. As Tom Moore continues to slide backwards, it looks like, but Woodard in the Lycoya on his way forwards. And of course, this being in the UK, we've had some of the Grand Prix drivers coming over here. Um, Lucas Weber, Devin Butler, and Casper Ackerman have been seen around the paddock. Um, 
Ackerman, of course, not exactly willing to talk to us. Uh, Lucas Weber enjoying himself. Here is Arto Kakinen in car number one. The champion's number one trying to hold off MDC. I don't, Castaneda getting a good run on him this time. Eklund watching the proceedings back there in the 11. There is Castaneda on the curb. He's got, Kakinen gives him plenty of space, but wide exit there, but Eklund's gonna be all over him like a bad smell as they as they come down the front straight away here. Good, Castaneda gapping him already. As uh, now Kakinen trying to hold off, the, is gonna have to try to hold off the Swede. He is sliding the rear end of that car around. Eklund trying to force her. Is she going to try to make this move on the outside? Yes, she is. She's going to try. I don't think it's going to work all that well. But uh, she's going to get a good run off of turn seven down to eight. Is Kekkonen going to let her have it? I think he might be. Might He's going to. I'll see here. Oh, Eklund very wide on exit. She hits the curb a little bit. She's going to be able to clear him, and, he, and it looks like she does. Hadeland in car 19 has been controlling things at the front, and this she's now bringing it in for, into the pits. This is scheduled. Does these long straightaways and a lot of heavy acceleration required here. Uh, this is going to, uh, fuel mileage is not expected to be very good for most of the field. Uh, so uh, we uh, will see uh, what we see here, but I think we're going to see a lot, a uh, lot more people pitting and um, not too many gamblers on strategy, but we'll see. Uh, we have heard some talk as Fischl comes in now from, well, from the lead with Castaneda behind him and Eklund. Kekkonen in as well. Uh, I believe Fernando Costa, who just went by, has already been in in the 154. Um, now, uh, there have been some some people suggesting that you might be able to get some really good fuel mileage with a taller gear, and Gaspar D'Souza in the 20 car, and you have Jenny Kuznetsov in the 15, might appear to have that kind of setup on. Uh, they're with running taller gears to use less fuel, however, they're going to be slower over a long run here. Uh, that is the kind of trade-off, it seems like. D'Souza, a pretty disciplined driver usually, as well as Kuznetsov. D'Souza letting him go. Uh, of course, Kuznetsov coming off his first win in his home race. And I can tell you that was quite the party on the front straightaway. I don't think I've seen anything like that since Kekkonen's car first, uh, his two Cariola wins, actually. But even still, um, that's the only thing that even comes close, really. As Kuznetsov brings it, brings that car in. Wait, D'Souza stayed out. D'Souza staying out. He's trying to do 14 laps. For that's that seems that seems risky here. Oh, contact! Kekkonen and Savarol. Whoa, that was that looked a little unnecessary. Kekkonen not giving a whole lot of space, leaving the pit exit, but he just put himself in the wall. Um, also, Luciano uh, not exactly giving Kekkonen uh, room to merge into the into the pack, maybe, but. It might have to be one that's reviewed later, but I'm not sure that there's much that really can or needs to be done about that. Luciano Savarol, car number five. Um, he's been, he needs a big result sometime soon. Oh, and he's, he's slowing. Savarol's got a problem here in car five. Oh, oh, Krikorian unsighted. DK a little unsighted, I think, and it looked like the five may have veered over to the right slightly. And Savarol has gotten that car going again. But there's some damage to the 13. David Krikorian got some damage. He's over on the right. Oh, John Dilks into the back of him. Oh, I think you maybe should have stayed over on the right side there. But uh, that's a pretty wide turn, and you got a lot of room to go by. So uh, I can kind of see why John Dilks may not be happy about that. But it looks like he got away without much damage on that on car 68. And D'Souza did. He's, he's staying out of. Oh no. He tried to do. He tried to go for 15, but he doesn't have. He's running out of fuel from the lead. Gaspar de Souza has won a race in the series using fuel mileage to come from last to first. Oh, that's a big mistake. He ran it one lap too long, and he was already running that, running it way longer than anyone else had even dared to. Oh, that's a huge. That's a huge error there from de Souza, who's going to tumble down the order. As Hadland regains the lead, it looks like in car 19. I'm gonna do two stop. Gonna, was he trying to two stop a 37 lap race? That would have been that would have been very very uh, very chancy. Um, as we see uh, here is the uh, running order on the uh, on the left here. We're looking at Castaneda in car number nine back in seventh. I'd like to point out some good runs. Lecklider has whole has gotten his way up to 11th. And they were not, that was a very fast pit stop, I think, by that number 10 bunch. 
looked way too like very looked like a very fast stop and there's some other cars that if they seem a little out of order uh then that might be then they might that might be the case there so not everyone filling it all the way it looks like and castaneda in car number nine um running pr running pretty well so far uh he is uh, just oh here is yeah here's the uh, car number 10 black glider who's made up a lot of ground and um, I'm, I do suspect that the reason for that is because they may have short filled. Remember, uh, with that line that he took in qualifying, he got a lot of, he got an extra, he got a uh, better run down the front straightaway. And with the Tenere already a little suspect on top speed, you wonder if that was uh, that team's way of trying to overcome that. But um, he's hanging on to Woodard right now in uh, the 41 so we'll see how that develops i don't would are able to pull away pretty easily though cameron taylor hanging in second in car number seven putting some pressure on ingrid hadeland to trying to win what could be the very last race in the uk uh the future now the reason this is the only uk round this year has been because uh, the series did not uh, renegotiate a deal with brands hatch because of the brexit deal uh, but also, this could be the last race here because there's a venue in Germany and one in the uh, and one in Ireland that the uh, the Irish Racing Association put in, uh, put a bid in to try to get a, a Master Cup race over in Ireland, and it's a pretty a pretty good little circuit over there. So we'll see what happens there as we look back at Craig Janser in the 81 car. Now, of course, the race in Germany would come uh, partially through Gessler's influence, but. Um, also because there is an increasing amount of German interest in the series with the likes of Grabert and Tessa Strassenberg and Craig Janser, who we learned actually has a decent fan club over there as uh, the uh, car 81. And then a good run up in the points. He has cleaned. Uh, that, oh, we've got trouble ahead of him. Oh, no. Oh, more. That's Janser's involved in it. What happened there? That's more. More Lefay and Kuznetsov. Oh, Moore moves over on the on the 15 car. Maybe didn't give him a lot of space there. We'll see. Oh, and Janser was blindsided. Davenport, I think, got a piece of that in the 17. That's Davenport very high in the championship, and so is Moore. Oh, this will be a better look. This will be a better look at this. And we're waiting, waiting for him. There he is, top of the screen. Kuznetsov crowding. Moore crowds over, and then Kuznetsov... I, don't, I think Kuznetsov had enough of that and just turned hard right into him because look at the way that that turn is. Kuznetsov would have to be forced to kind of back out of it. And I don't think Kuznetsov was willing to play ball. Just hooked more, hooked more in the left rear and turned him around. Arto Kekkonen, car number one, into the pits. That's early. That's very early for Kekkonen. Wonder if he noticed uh, the uh, uh, some of the wonder if they noticed some of the other team's fueling strategy. Now here is looking at Davenport, I believe. Cooper and Rossini behind him. Uh, that, yeah, there is Davenport. He's got a little da he's got damage on that car. Chris Davenport having an excellent season so far, flying under the radar to be second in the championship. That's just really not going to help his case. Now here is Kuznetsov in car 15. Now, now that that was a little bit of uh, interesting driving there, but I think no matter what happens, oh, okay. I thought that was going to be decided post-race, perhaps, because that looked a little boring. I guess not. Okay. I'm not sure how to feel about that one, but that's, uh... I feel like that's a little hard to argue one way, a little hard to argue against. But it's a uh, tough deal over there, definitely. Now, here is Battle for the Lead here. Hadland and Taylor. Taylor into the back of Hadland. Slid up into the 19. Here comes Fischl. Is he going to have a run here? But Hadland able to hold on to the out, on the outside. Cameron Taylor, not normally a very rough driver. I don't think that was, I don't think that was intentional contact. That's Eklund back there in fourth, who is run, who is closing in on this battle. The Swede has entered the fray, as uh, Hadland able to hang on to the lead. Uh, Cameron Taylor, very gentlemanly driver. I don't think would have liked to have taken the lead with, um, even though I think that was pretty incidental contact. Fischl having a run on him, having a run on his teammate. Uh, down the front straightaway, Eklund back there. Taylor feeds uh, Taylor feeds in behind Fischl. Hadland still holds on as they come through turn one and into turn two. Any any late moves? No. No. Um, no late moves from anyone. Everyone pretty well disciplined back there. 
Here's Fischl in car number eight, who uh, we understand has filed the appropriate paperwork to change his master license registration to say he is Israeli instead of American. The only thing that would really change is the national anthem if he wins and the chirons you see at the bottom of the screen right there. One thing that is a surprise though is that Fischl was not booed during driver introductions. All throughout the European tour, the Boo Birds have come out in droves and while it's easy to say that it might be because Fischl hasn't thrown any local heroes under the bus this week, uh, you'd be quite mistaken because he had a lot to say about uh, uh, Chris Davenport. He said he was, quote, impressed that he had gotten it together finally. He insinuated that Tom Moore was not intelligent enough to understand left from right, referred to Darren Cardell as a, quote, brain-damaged taxi driver, unquote, and made some rather uncomfortable comments towards Liv Eklund as well. Davenport was the only person to respond to him. As Hadland pits the 19 car from the lead, Davenport, of course, said that Fischl should just mind his own business. Oh, and that's Darren Cardell slowing. Big disappointment for Cardell and his fans that showed up here today and for Ferdinand Autosport. They had uh, so many unique things on this guest that they wanted to show off and test today. Oh, and Rossini contact with the 140 car around. He goes, Rossini, nowhere to go. There's Cooper involved in the two. And oh, that's Connor Friel in the 68. That's very disappointing for the uh, Ferdinand Autosport car and also for Connor Friel. Uh, Team Timothy has had a miserable weekend and for Friel to get this ride in such short notice, he's made the most of the opportunity, but I think uh, he is going to be looking forward to racing in the United States again. Uh, Dale Cottenham is actually here, the, uh, sponsor, the owner of the sponsor on that car, and uh, they'll be looking forward to returning to the U.S., that's for sure. As Eklund pits the 11, Devereaux pits the 74. As here is... Here is Marshall, the leading independent trophy car. He looks like he's slowing a little bit, but I wonder if this could be a different fuel strategy he's on, and he's letting them all go. It's what just Sato in the 175. That's Carroll. Packer Carroll having a good run there. D'Souza's four laps behind. He's not, he's not really in the picture at all. D'Souza just going for uh, pride, really. Um, Jasper D'Souza trying to get trying to get the point for our... That's not really a point, but it's prize money for the fastest lap of the race. I think that's what he might be doing. There's Tony Durbin back there in the 12 as well, but looks like Josh Marshall might be having a bit of a problem here. Back with Cameron Taylor and Saul Fischl, who are running first and second. Um, as Taylor pits the seven from second, Fischl is staying out. So the Iowan is coming in. As you see, uh, Webster leaving a stall in the 87. Webster having a kind of miserable weekend. As now we see Eklund leaving the pits in car number 11. There is... Uh, that's Ruiz going to be. That's Ruiz back there in the 33. They are not on the, um, not really on the same pit strategy. I think Eklund's going to let him go. Uh, she is, however, racing the car directly behind her because that's Hadland. Hadland apparently got stuck in traffic while we were uh, focusing elsewhere. As Eklund has jumped ahead of her teammate, and that means Adrian Devereaux has jumped ahead of Eklund, who is probably now looking in a rearview mirror and noticing her teammate closing in. If you remember back to the round of Los Angeles, Liv Eklund and Ingrid Hadeland were so single-mindedly focused on beating each other that they cost themselves several positions late in the race. Unlike in Los Angeles, this is shaping up to be a battle for a podium place, so the intensity is ramping up by orders of magnitude. And the team's probably hoping they don't crash into each other. Eklund coming to put a lap on Trek Tauger. He's one of the Independence Trophy cars, the 741 machine up there. I've noticed that Eklund has been giving a lot of the lap cars and Independence Trophy cars a lot more space when coming to lap them. She's not just making bonsai moves and putting them in impossible situations. She's been giving them enough time to pick a side of the track they want to run on before overtaking them. Bit of a different attitude, and I'm not sure how well that's going to work because here comes, here comes the 19. Here comes Taylor right out of the pits. They've jumped ahead of Cameron Taylor in the car seven. Hadland on the outside as Eklund, Eklund defends the inside and holds on to the place. Now you wonder if she's going to have to sort of hurry up Tauger here in, um, in the 741 car. Uh, Eklund's been pretty feisty in traffic. She's going to, th she throws it in the inside. Oh, they touch. Eklund throws it into the 741. She's going to have to fend it from, ha from Hadland now. She's going to take the place around the outside, it looks like. And that's definitely a different attitude that um, we've seen from Eklund. Eklund there, that is very unusual to see an attitude like that. Very unusual. Um, Eklund, very unusual person in general. As Hadland able to take a place from her, just being a little bit more canny with lap traffic. As Pliskin here in car, in car 16 is running an eighth. 
He's having a pretty quiet day, and he is uh, having a pretty solid run. Uh, we'll see, but uh, not noticing a lot of the ultimate speed from Pliskin. Wonder if he's playing the long game. Here's two other guys that are, well, sort of playing the long game. Lechleiter and Kuznetsov. With the penalty that's handed Kuznetsov, Lechleiter's going to let him go. Now, I do wonder what this... Uh, the 10 car and the 15 have not pitted for the uh, second time yet. This is a bit late into this fuel run. Fischl is in, in car number eight. Now this, now that's a bit interesting. Fischl, I think, is uh, going to... I want. They're going to try to run... Is he going to try to run the rest of the way from here? I'm not sure that's going to work. I think he's going to definitely need a pit again, especially with the pace he's been setting. Fischl absolutely flying out there. Uh, the, I think just the pace itself is going to be unsustainable. Ryan Matthews in the 06 has uh, not yet uh, come in for a second time, I do believe. Adrian Devereaux has, and that's the kind of pace difference uh, uh, you see. Uh, not only in old tires, but when uh, someone's trying to save fuel and someone isn't. Ryan Matthews, very disciplined driver, one of the older drivers in the field, but definitely still has something left. He actually has quite a bit left, I should say. Um, and I think he'd be very upset if I reminded him about that. About that. Is here is Hadland and Fischl. Fischl's jumped ahead of the... Oh, oh they touch! Hadland into the side of the eight, and around goes Fischl! They're both off the course! And, whoa, that's okay. That was quick. Hadland had the... Had a, that was a pretty aggressive move, but she had she had wheels on the inside of them. But that, that racing line does narrow up quite a bit. One more look at have, have another look at it here. As Ingrid throws in the inside, Fischl slowed up take to try to take a defensive line, but Hadlam was already committed there. And I think she was already a lot further alongside Fischl than Tony Durbin was on Connor Freel earlier in the race. That being said, uh, rearward visibility in a Master Cup car is pretty good these days. I don't know what more race control thinks it's going to get by reviewing that again. That penalty's honestly quite fair. But if Durbin didn't get a penalty, then Hadeland shouldn't either. Now looking back at Morgan Le Fay, currently running 21st. However, she's going to jump up the running order more by default than anything else. And she just set the second fastest lap of the race today. Remember I mentioned that fastest lap bonus. She might be in contention for that. That's uh, just a small monetary prize. As Ryan Matthews pits the 06, Kuznetsov, who would actually be leading the race without that penalty, is coming in as well on lap 25. Where's the 10? Here comes Lechleiter's in. Lechleiter coming in as well on 25. Now the pace from the 15 and the 10, I definitely think they're trying to do this on two stops. It's going to be a bit touch and go because they have picked it up a tiny bit. We'll see if they're able to do it or how this all shakes out. As uh, Lechleiter's crew, excellent pit work there on the Tenera. They may, they may not have fueled them all the way. They, oh, there's a little bit of contact there because Nietzsche trying to squeeze them in. Lechleiter trying to get regain control of that car. No one hits the wall. Just a bit of aggressive driving, leaving the pits. But I don't think I don't think that'll uh, I don't think that'll be worth investigating. Stewards appear to agree. Um, as Kuznetsov, who has been significantly faster than Lechleiter all weekend long, uh, sitting there is now Adrian Devereaux in car number 74 has. Uh, gotten the lead back he's gonna have to build a pretty big gap in order to make the in order to make um, um, this strategy work however given all the cars that are trying to do it in two stops I think that's pretty likely uh, they may be able to do that here is second place Eklund in car number 11 a little bit of right set a little bit of a mark on that car from the collision with Tauger there is Cameron Taylor directly behind her Eklund really trying to really pushing in that 11 that 11 car, she really wants to have a big result here today. Uh, and she's probably more motivated than uh, we've seen her so far this year. And Eklund is definitely one of the more fiery rookies we've seen in a while. Definitely not afraid to, uh, definitely not afraid to, uh, to use fenders when necessary. But, but here's another car having a big run from the back. It's Catherine Williams, uh, independent trophy contender Catherine Williams, running up in seventh running up in cell 15th sorry in the points solidly in the points in this 93 car and I think uh, and I I do believe this car is, this is another one of the Aspiras but this this car is having a pretty good run so far I don't I think they're gonna be I think this is on a three-stop strategy and given that uh, she started well back in the field it's a pretty good effort um, she of course the three cars she's uh, really uh, really watching are 
on her mirrors, and uh, she's trying to hang on here, but good pace so far from the driver out of Minnesota, even though this team is actually based out of Europe, even though the driver is, it is an American. Here is Leroux in car 25, one of the Ortega cars. He's had not a good weekend. To say the least, it's not been a pretty bad weekend for him. Um, the Ortega Motorsport thinks that he would have qualified a little better had he not been blocked in qualifying by Zach Webster. That's what they're saying. He's having a good battle here with Truman Ellison that we haven't really been able to focus on too much. Leroux having a good run now down the front straightaway. I'm trying to get around, get by Ellison. We got good, we got some good battles going up and down to the field, but uh, when we get a breather, we're able to look from what's going out the front. We're able to look further back here, and uh, Brandon Leroux has been one of the highlights. He's pretty fun to watch if, that, if you're uh, just watching for uh, a single driver here. Now, here's Morgan LeFay ch uh, challenging and charging on Daniel Lecklider in the 10. LeFay having, a, having fits getting by Lecklider, who is... This is some great... He's doing a pretty good job defending that position in uh, that number 10 to air. LeFay trying to get by. Five and six, she does not close enough. Lecklider looks pretty confident through this part of the course. It's uh, down these long straightaways where that car really seems to be st uh, struggling a little bit. Joe Lenick in car number 23 has had a bit of an all, has had a, um, uh, having a battle here with Greg Woodard, it looks like, in the 41. Um, as uh, Woodard trying to get by, that's Fitzgerald in front of him. That's for position. Carter Fitzgerald having a very solid run that we haven't really noticed or shouldn't say haven't really noticed, but haven't been able to focus on much because Fitzgerald's really been running by herself most of the time. Woodard and Fitzgerald are peeling off. They're peeling off to make their third stop. Lennox staying out in car 23. Here's Adrian Devereaux in car number 74, leading the race pretty comfortably. No one near him. Uh, definitely showing his mastery here. Uh, this is a track that he has seemed to own. He does have the fastest lap of the race so far. He brings, he's bringing the car in again uh, for his final stop, it looks like, and, and for the uh, the ACAP Solutions team over at, Hod at uh, over at the Michelin Suns. Excuse me. Oh, that was sacrilege. As both the both the Lynx cars are in, Eklund in, Hadland in, and uh, that's uh, I believe that's Stoidler. Ashby is in. Fitzgerald is in. Uh, I think that's Woodard behind Fitzgerald. That would make sense if that's who that is. That's uh, Rossini in the background in. And here is Cameron Taylor. He was now in who has now inherited the lead of the race. We're on we got seven laps or uh yeah, seven laps to go. Uh, Cameron Taylor is in the lead in car number seven. Should be expecting him in the pits shortly. Um as he is having a pretty solid run out there, the Ohioan, making good making good on pace. Uh, and here is Castaneda in car number nine, uh, right behind Fischl. He is still staying out. Fischl and Castaneda should be inheriting second and third this time by. And there they go, second and third, as I suspected. Uh, Castaneda getting around. That's Chuck Johnson in the 32, who's had kind of a miserable weekend in general. That Hastert Racing has looked off, uh, in, uh, period. Here's Lecklider now, who's being scored inside the top ten. Oh, they're going for it. They are going for it as Lecklider in fifth, trying to hold off LeFay. He's, he's holding her off so far. Morgan LeFay is having a very difficult time getting by this Tenere. She has a huge uh, advantage on in straightaway speed, but Lecklider just, this car is dialed in, looks like. Um, as here is Olenek, and uh, that's not a battle for position. If I'm Olenek, I let Kuznetsov go because there's no point in fighting him. Not only is he not on the same fuel strategy, he has a penalty, so he's really 30 seconds behind where he actually is. Lecklider in the background there. Um, as Kuznetsov goes for it, is Olenek going to move over and let him go? Yes, he is. Olenek doesn't bother fighting that. Kuznetsov had the line. That was actually a pretty good overtake, but Olenek's on an in-lap. Here he comes. Olenek in for the final time, we believe. Yeah, well, it would have to be. Unless something catastrophic happens. Here's Greg Woodard in the 41. Ruiz back uh, back there in the 33 is having a decent uh, decent day, but could be so much better. You say that for some people, couldn't you? You could say that for someone every race weekend. Uh, Greg Woodard, who is, uh, uh, this is a track he's gone fairly well at. This is actually a pretty disappointing run for him, all things considered. Uh, not, we're not used to seeing him this far back here. And uh, and this 41 car. The light, oh, that might be why. That might be. That might have something to do with it. Oh, he gets out of the way. 
That was a panic move. Woodard, genuinely one of the more genuinely one of the more gentlemanly drivers in the field most times. Gets out of everyone's way just in the nick of time as Cameron Taylor rejoins after pitting the seven car from the lead. Let's see where he cycles out. Is he gonna be? There's Costa, but he's a lap down. He's he's uh, no factor whatsoever. Costa's had a pretty uh, awful day, to be honest. Here's Kurt Pliskin in the 16. Now, Kurt Pliskin's pace tells me he's not going to be able to... He's going to be able to go the whole way, or at least he's trying to. But also, his pace is suggesting to me that the leaders are going to catch him before the end of the race, or at least the cars that would be leading the race, or that were leading the race before this round of pit stops kicked off. Here's Fischl. So we're looking at car number eight, getting ready to leave the pits. That's a bit of a long stop there for the eight car. Very long stop for Fischl. Very long stop. I wonder if they had a slight problem, uh, they had a problem fueling the car or something as here comes, that's, I believe that's Hadeland that just went by him, but that's not a battle for position really. That's D'Souza, that's Ashby, that is, I think. Yes, that is. Yes, Ashby is for position right now. Kuznetsov, had he not had that penalty with Moore, would be leading the race. With four laps to go, he has a pretty big gap on the field, or at least on second, but it's not its not big enough. Now, that is interesting. Lechleiter has really begun to back it down. Four, almost four seconds a lap quicker. That gap is going to evaporate before the end of the race. Lechleiter is holding on to the lead right now, but that is that, there's no way that's sustainable. Pliskin has already been caught by the leaders. We go down. Several cars appear out of order because some, I think the 741 car might also be going for it. On two stops only. Oh boy, Lechleiter is going to have to hang on tight here. He's leading the race. He's been in the series for over a decade, yet to win a race. They're going for it. I, they have to be. For, and especially for Tenere, that could be huge. Not only for Tenere, but for Lechleiter himself. He's been in and out of the series. I've been a very, very reliable co competitor in the Independence Trophy. Adrian Devereaux, almost four seconds a lap faster than the leader. The, the Lechleiter is crawling around this track. That that lead he has, there's no way that holds up. But that's not going to help his case. That's going to help, not going to help Devereaux's case. Is a lap car like that? Now where's Cameron Taylor? There he is. Taylor's in second. Devereaux back in third. So the Ohioan could be looking for his first win. There you see that gap. Your Unicell Lechleiter go by. Here is Cameron. The gap between Lechleiter and Cameron Taylor. Lechleiter might have to pick it up a little bit. Just a couple laps to go. Oh, this looks this looks like the round of Russia, doesn't it? And the round of France. Oh boy, buckle up. This could be. This is one that everyone thought there's no way, no way, with the uh, fuel cells that the series gives everyone at the start of the weekend. No way, everyone is going to make it on the end. No, no way everyone's going to make it to the end on two stops. Absolutely not. Uh, Eklund here running in, uh, she's going to be running in fifth or sixth, I do believe. Yes. Trying to run down Castaneda. Eklund, look, Eklund's having, had a good weekend so far. Yeah, it's going to be a good, good result, but I think perhaps this could be a little bit uh, better than what it was. Uh, definitely showing, uh, showing out strong and definitely proving, uh, Proving that she has something there, and so does Castaneda in front of her. Castaneda's having um, a very good weekend off the track. He's having a great one on it uh, in that car number nine. So both cars nine and eleven showing up uh, with big weekends uh, here if everything holds as it does. Ryan Matthews as having a good battle there with uh, not really De Souza, but he's also looks like he's going to be able to get a uh, solid result out from this weekend. I do wonder now they I think they short filled on their last stop the 06 very very. Very, very uh, short stop there. It's Gaspar D'Souza into the back of Matthews. Oh, Gaspar D'Souza around. He's he's well out of the running. That was a bit, I think that one was a bit uncalled for. I think D'Souza may have tried to back out of that a bit too late and just decided it was better to spin himself out. Uh, here is, here's Kekkonen now getting around uh, Tauger. That is for position, actually. So Trek Tauger in the 741 car has gotten himself into the points after an incident earlier with Eklund. Now, here is Lechleiter now. As coming now, he's got, there's two laps to go. He's coming to take the white. Cameron Taylor is closing rapidly, but Lechleiter picked it up a little bit that last time by. The gap is really beginning to dissolve, though. Well, that, that gap, is that going to hold? 
White flag, of course, white flag's been given for the final time. Lecklider is leading the race in a Tenere. Nobody in their wildest dreams would have called that Tenere leading a lap anywhere, period, this year. And here they are uh, leading the final stages of a Master Cup race uh, because Daniel Lecklider and his crew appeared to throw the dice on Saturday to go for it in, in qualifying. They read the they read the rules in the bulletins correctly, uh, got themselves up to 17th on the grid, and uh, they got just about half a lap to go. Oh, Cameron Taylor, purple second sector. You don't know what that terminology, me or terminology means. He's fa uh, fastest of all in that uh, sector of the track. Taylor's right on his rear bumper now. He's gonna have a really good run in the last couple of corners, and this 10 car does not accelerate well off the final corner. He's right there. Taylor's got one shot. One shot. There's Devereaux behind him in case it all goes south. Lecklider's going to make it. Is he going to make it to the end? No, oh, camera. He hits the curb. Taylor's on the back of him. I don't believe it. Lecklider's going to make it. Lecklider wins in Wales. I do not believe what I just saw. Plenty of drivers have waited a long time for their first victory. But Daniel Lecklider's is going to feel extremely sweet. He's bounced in and out of the series, and he's made the most of it here today. Lecklider takes the victory over Cameron Taylor and Art and Adrian Devereaux. Kurt Pliskin made it on two stops also. He got fourth. Castaneda fifth, then Eklund. Ryan Matthews, a very good effort, puts him seventh. Apologies to the Legion of Ashby fans that we didn't really get to cover her race much, but she came home in the top 10 very solidly. Fischl is going to feel very bitter about coming home in ninth, especially given some contact earlier. He marched straight up into the steward's office, and um, I can only imagine what's going on there. Fachisato came back from some early dramas. He also made it on two stops. Then Yevgeny Kuznetsov would have won this race had he not incurred a penalty earlier. Ouch. Solid drives from Morgan LeFay. Brandon LaRoe made it on two stops. Carter Fitzgerald, Joe Olenek, Arto Kekinen, Alessandro Rossini, Trek Tauger made it on two stops. Catherine Williams, who finished just a few seconds behind him on the road, had to do it on three. Both of them needed a big result like this to save their independent trophy campaigns, and they came from deep in the field to do it. Before we check in on that, let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship. Saul Fischl continues to extend his lead. He has a 63-point lead over Chris Davenport, who had a pretty miserable day, and Kurt Pliskin has moved up into third. Adrian Devereaux has moved up to fourth. Devereaux has completed all but three laps this season. Eklund continues her st uh, strong start to the season, but she has dropped to fifth. Castaneda is up to sixth. Cameron Taylor jumps up to seventh as he continues to pile on points. Tom Moore all the way down to eight, uh, has dropped down to eighth, but he is still very much a contender here in a uh, pretty strong showing for the Volpe driver. Ingrid Hadeland's season has been beset with misfortunes, or misfortunes in this case, air quotes. Uh, Joe Olenek rounds out the top 10 of the championship. Arto Kekkonen's title defense not going quite to plan so far, but he sits 11th. Still not out of it. Ryan Matthews is still in with a shout as well. Don't think he's really expecting to, but he's having a great start to the year in 12th. So is Kuznetsov after uh, he's gotten his first win. You know, who knows where he could be? Uh, could be because he certainly seems to have a lot of pace at the moment. David Krikorian needs a bit better luck, and he'd be higher. This is Atkins' last race, so he's going to tumble through the standings, but he's tied with Savaral on 117. Rossini in 17th is going to be having a... Uh, Seeing Alessandro Rossini down in 17th in points seems a bit odd uh, because uh, Rossini was doing very well at this time last year. In fact, uh, none of the Volpe drivers other than Tom Moore are very high in the championship, which is very much a surprise. Scott Bates and Ian Cooper are not in the top 20 in the points either. Zelda Ashby in the 55 gets another top 10, which she needed to get more points on the board. Tony Durbin languishing in 19th for his standards. And Selmy, well, he's, he's only run two races so far. He sits 20th. Uh, if you're wondering about Scott Bates, he sits 21st in the championship on 83 points. And let's have one quick look at the Independence Trophy. And Mason Yokoyama still sits on top. Josh Marshall's total wasn't able to overcome Yokoyama uh, and his great runs earlier in the year. Williams wasn't able to overcome that deficit, and neither was Tauger. Fernando Costa, of course, sitting back on 136 points. WRT and that 93 car, however, do have another promoter's option in their back pocket, and that is going to be for the very next race in the championship. The round of Minnesota will be returning to the series for the first time since 2001, 
back at its old home, the Minnesota Motorsports Park. One of the most highly anticipated races of the season. If you'd like to watch the previous events in the series, check out this list over here. Or check out these videos from friends of the show. Or if you'd like to be social, join the Discord.